Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final episode of CME Pulse for the month of January. It's been a hell of a first month of 2018 for this company. I can, I can uh, assure you that if you have not seen what has gone down these past couple of weeks, you've missed some incredible matches. And if you did not see Resolution last night, you missed an incredible show. This show was just fantastic from top to bottom. Every single competitor that stepped in the ring last night delivered on their potential. They they went out there, they fought tooth and nail, and that was none, none more shown off than in the main event for the CME World Championship as Rich Reed challenged his own tag team partner, Jason Adams, for the World Championship. And you know what? Jason Adams, with one of the performances of his career, one of the best performances I have ever seen out of anybody. And I saw Rich Reed in that same match, and he gave a damn good performance too. So Jason Adams has earned the night off this week. It's been a while since he's had a night off, it seems. He earns the night off. I don't even know if his body could take just 24 hours after what he went through last night. I don't know if he can handle it. He gets the night off. But that does not change the fact that Joel Hernandez is the new number one contender for that CME World Championship. You know that him and the LBA are always looming around the corner. So he's got he's to gotta start getting his focuses on, on the LBA soon. But he can just rest easy tonight. This is going to be a fantastic night. Our main event, the CME Women's Championship, will be on the line. It's Sarah Shepard, who won a very, very big match for her last week against Aiko Katsuko, will challenge Serena for the CME Women's Championship. Serena beat Aiko last night, and Sarah Shepard is right next in line. That's going to be our main event. But up right now, to kick off the show, we're going to get a little action. Two guys looking to establish themselves and continue growing up the ladder here in CME. As Stephen Parker, one half of the spectrum, is out by himself, he is going to be taking on Ryan Stockton, who debuted just a couple of months ago and is looking to keep his momentum going. This is going to be a fantastic show. Otto is going to be in action later tonight also against Blitzkrieg. That's a little bit of a return from what we saw last night. I can't wait for any of this. We got Crash Course coming next month, too, just around the corner. It's, 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 it's going to start creeping up, on us, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't wait for that either. Crash Course going to look to shape up soon. But right now, both of these men's careers looking to shape up. Let's see how they go as the bell rings. Oh, Ryan Stockton challenging Stephen Parker to come right at him. And Stephen is no, uh, not somebody I would describe as shy. He obliges immediately. Continues stomping on him. Irish whip. Ryan hangs onto the apron. Well, that might have been a bad call because Stephen's following him on the apron now. And Stephen Parker back suplexes him on the hardest part of the ring. Spine first goes Stockton. Steven got him by the back of the head, throws him back in the ring now. Steven, springboard. Ryan got up to his feet, tried to maybe block that coming in, but the springboard senton hits the target, and Ryan is crawling to the ropes just to help himself up. He is stunned early on. Parker, Irish whip to the corner. Little kick to the thigh, trying to knot up the hamstring a little bit there. Ryan Stockton, a house of fire, comes charging into the corner, but avoided brilliantly by Steven, who comes out with a tornado DDT. I have not seen this kind of fire from Parker in a long, long time, but it's very, very welcome. Oh, look at that, tilt the world to a small package. Two. Ooh, Ryan Stockton just manages to break that small package up and get himself out of there. He's going to have to fight back soon, or else this match may be over quicker than we intended. This, this was uh, this was going to be a big-time match for both men, and right now it's looking like Ryan Stockton is going to have an uphill climb to even get keep this match going longer than two minutes. He hit a neck breaker, but Steven is still in command now with a, a brilliant head scissors. I'm not saying this is an upset. Steven's proven himself already, but Ryan Stockton has gotten some great wins under his belt already, and Steven Parker is just making it look easy. He goes right up to the top rope, and there is a corkscrew senton. One, two. Oh, man, I, I honestly thought Steven Parker would have the three there. And he still relentlessly keeps up the pressure with that up and over neck breaker. Stephen Parker going up top. Now Ryan Stockton is a sitting duck. What do we got coming here? The shooting star press does not connect. Oh my God, he landed. That, that was a belly flop for the ages. Ryan Stockton taking advantage with that snap German suplex. Right on the back of his head, he landed. The bridge follow through only gets a two count. But this may be what Stockton needs to get himself back into this match. Crash and burn from Steven Parker to a German suplex. And it looks like 
The tables have turned. Steven now gets clotheslines up to the outside of the ring. Ryan Stockton not afraid to take some chances in his own right. Over the top, but he misses. He went for a somersault plancha, it looked like, but Steven Parker sidestepped out of the way, and Ryan Stockton. Talk about crash and burn. That's a fiery one right there. Steven, oh, good God, I think he may be dead. The suicide dive lives up to its name. How is he getting up? He, la he landed right on his head, it looked like. There is no fear in the heart of Steven Parker. He rolls him over and hooks the leg. And a two count. That's all we're going to get now. Ryan's still hanging in there, but Steven looks okay. I'm just, I'm just a little bit worried that that might be catching up to him a little bit later. Oh, off the second rope, double axe handle. Maybe the most conservative high-flying move that he has in his arsenal. Uh-oh, uh-oh, don't turn your back on Ryan Stockton who springs up to his feet and he takes him down with two forearm strikes. We got him in a tilt-a-whirl. Steven Parker breaks the tilt-a-whirl and hits a reverse DDT instead. Look at Ryan, he, he's, he's dazed and confused. He doesn't know where he is. Steven springboards, goes for a seated senton. Underneath goes Ryan Stockton to duck it. Ryan's got him on his shoulders now. For what? Ooh, a Death Valley driver. Good torque on that Death Valley driver. Ryan gets set up, Russian leg sweep. Very nicely done as he rolls through it. Now he's going up to the top rope. Oh, that it looked like a frog splash. Didn't get the, the uh, froggiest of splashes, but still effective nonetheless. He's hoisted him up now, the power game. I wouldn't say Ryan Stockton is necessarily a, a very powerful man, but in this match, he definitely has a strength advantage. Look at this, right? Grabbed him by the hair almost, just stomping his face into the mat. Now he's feeling a little bit more comfortable. We've seen Ryan Stockton get into this mindset before. He gets him up. Oh, Steven pushes him away. Trying to fight back now is Parker, who gets him again. Oh, it looked like a DDT into a small package this time. Oh, only a one count. He slips out of it just at one. Look at the stare down. The little little glimpse that he gave him before he kicked him in the gut. Runs right into it with a headbutt. Now he's got right hands. Backs him up into the corner to Steven Parker. This kid will not say die. Oh, fantastic leaping ability there. As he just leaps up with a Hurricane Rana off the top. Crowd is getting very, very invested in the flight of Parker. They're definitely behind this kid. They want to see him succeed. Can he oblige them? Oh, Irish whip into the opposite corner. Very nicely done with that roundhouse kick coming across the ring. He follows that up. A cartwheel moonsault. What can this guy not do? Well, he tried to hit the shooting star press earlier. He's going to look to do that right now, but again does not hit the mark. Ryan Stockton moves out of the way at the last second. Now he's measuring his man up for the gory neck breaker. It hits. Look at this impact. The neck just slammed down straight, straight across the back of Ryan Stockton. He goes for the cover and hooks the leg. Oh, Steven Parker is still in this match. You gotta admire the kid's heart, but he's taken two big, big chances with those shooting star presses, and they have not hit the mark. You gotta, you gotta wonder if, if he hit, or even if he didn't go for those moves, if this match would have been over by now, because that's how Ryan Stockton has capitalized and gotten himself in this situation. He strikes back up Steven into the corner. He comes off the second rope, sunset flip, does not continue with the pin. He's got some other plans in mind. Leaping elbow strike does not hit. Steven Parker runs right at him with a clothesline. Oh my God, is he gonna go for it one more time? One more time, third time, can it be the charm? The shooting star press hits on the mark. One, two. Oh, how did he kick out? Ryan Stockton survives the third shooting star press attempt, the only one that landed. And that's got to be very, very disheartening if you're Stephen Parker. He worked his whole match trying to get that move off, and it still wasn't enough to beat Stockton. Oh, Stockton gets caught, but Enzagiri puts down Parker. Oh, that snapmare, very hard snapmare, and a leaping just punch to the face. 
Ryan now. Snap German suplex with a bridge. Oh, Steven Parker's busted open. Oh, my. Ryan, I, I think he got off that. I think he wants to deliver one more shot. Oh, Steven's a bloody mess after that shot to the head. What has he got in mind here? He, you, you gotta wonder if he had that win locked up. Oh, almost takes his head off with a clothesline. What more does he want to do to this kid? Oh, the running kick out of the corner. Just a big boot to the face. Explodes. And it gives Ryan Stockton the victory. Steven Parker fought tooth and nail that entire time, but, but Ryan Stockton was on his game just a little bit more. He survived the third shooting star press. This is the first one, I believe. Did not hit. The snap German suplex. Oh, I think this might be the second one. It was. The second one didn't hit. You can see every single time he missed, the impact that he sustained on those shots were just, they were devastating. And the gory neck breaker wasn't enough to put Steven away, but the exploding kick out of the corner did the trick. Ryan Stockton looking to keep himself going. He's got a lot of wins under his belt lately. I got to say, Darren Winter, maybe you got to have to start worrying about this guy as a next challenger for the CME Television Championship. But up next, ladies and gentlemen, as we get attention for Stephen Parker's injuries, Otto Diedon takes on Blitzkrieg. Now, last night, it was a fantastic tag team championship match between Otto and Referees Jr. and the World's Axis. Referees Jr. survived more than I thought he had in him. He got to tag to Otto. Otto was a house of fire, but at the end, referee succumbed to his injuries and the World's Axis retained the titles, but not without a fight. Absolutely not without a fight. And Otto's going to look to try and get some revenge in singles action. It's not for the titles, obviously, but still. Oh, Blitz, what the hell? Where the hell is Referees Jr., by the way? He should be out here with Otto. Blitzkrieg taking down Otto before the match even starts. Oh, my God. Otto's blindsided. He can't. He can't. Wait, wait. Oh, wait a minute. We got to switch the camera to the ramp, ladies and gentlemen. We got Takeshi Kato and Refer out here, too. Blitzkrieg DDT. And Takeshi is stomp stomping. That shirt looks familiar. Oh, please don't tell me. Oh, no. Takeshi and Refer have just gone backstage, ladies and gentlemen, but... I, I think my worst nightmare has just come true. Oh, my God, Otto, come on. You got to get out of there. Oh, what the hell? No, 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 no. Not the outside of pile driver, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, can we get some doctors on, uh, on helping Otto? Oh, no, we're still not done. We're still not done back here. What? If, the, if, that, if that shirt was any indication that he was wearing before, I think we're all in trouble. Oh, come on, referee. Come on, fight back. Fight back. Get out of this situation, referee. You survived the whole thing last night. Just try and fight back. Oh. No. Huh. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's what ended the match last night. That was... He's out. Can anybody stop this? Can anybody please stop this? Doesn't have to go down like this. Oh, no, no, no. This is deja vu again. I've seen this before. I've seen this before. I don't want to see this again. No, no, no. Oh, Jesus Christ, please. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, I, I apologize for an abrupt break like that. I, uh, referee is not, he's not looking too well. I'm sorry for this crowd. They had to sit through a very long intermission here, but Otto will be okay, but referees junior, I'm not sure. It's, uh, that's not a good situation. What I just saw, that's not good at all. And now, now we have to call this. This is our main event, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. We were supposed to have Otto versus, versus Blitzkrieg as well on this show. And, and obviously, we're not going to get that. So right to the main event we go. Sarah Shepard is going to challenge Serena for the Women's Championship. I'm, I'm going to try and get my head clear before this one starts because this deserves all of my attention. Sarah Shepard, this is the biggest match of her entire career. She won a fantastic uh, upset victory against Aiko Katsuko, who was the number one contender last week. Aiko came up just short against Serena, but Serena, you got to give it to her. She survived a whole lot of, a whole lot of offense last night from Aiko. It was, it was a lot of submission-based offense. Aiko really ground and pounded her, but Serena survived it, pulled out the victory in the end. In just 24 hours, she's defending her championship against Sarah Shepard. She wanted this one to go down tonight. She could choose whatever she wants to do, but I probably would have waited if I was her. Here she comes, the women's champion right now. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting, I'm getting worried in my headset. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. This is our main event match tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm hearing now that Jason Adams is going to come out to the ring at, at, at the end of the show. The world champion does not have to be here. I know he's listening right now. He's backstage somewhere. Jason, I implore you, please do not get involved. I don't care what you just saw. Don't worry about it. We have doctors checking the situation. You need to rest up, Jason. You've gone through hell these past couple of weeks. Don't do this. Is all I'm going to say is don't do this. I fully expect him to be out here anyway. I don't expect him to listen to me at all. Let's get, that sign said that fan is happy to be here. Let me be happy to be here too right now. Let's get this underway. This is for the Women's World Championship in CME. This is going to be a fantastic match. If both of these women's pedigrees is anything to go by, Serena's, Serena's a survivor. She survived a hell of a match last night. Sarah Shepard, you know that she knows this is the biggest match of her entire career. It's like last week was the biggest match of her entire career. She's got potential. She's never been one to, to be a pushover in the ring, but she finally got that big win that she was looking for this whole time last week, and now she's going to try and channel it right into a, a women's championship reign. It'd be a fantastic turn of events for her, no doubt about it. Serena looking to make sure that does not happen. Just 24 hours after surviving the night with that championship still in her possession, she could be saying goodbye to it for the last time. This is going to be an interesting matchup in the sense that last night we could kind of assume that Aiko was going to try and do the submission ground game, the, the, the ground and pound hard hitting style. I have absolutely no idea what Sarah Shepard's going to do in this match, so how she approaches this is going to be key. She can do a little bit of everything. Trash talking already to Serena. And they both lock up. I think Serena just brushed that off immediately as she just collaring up on Taya backs up Sarah into the corner. Looks like she has the strength advantage or Sarah. Oh, Sarah Shepard might have been sucking her, sucker, suckering her in. This whole, this whole show's already got me flustered after what I just saw. Sarah brawling away with her now with a, with a right hand and a nice seated jawbreaker. Playing possum with that collar and elbow tie-up led to her getting the advantage. She goes for a cover early. I'm a little bit uh, thinking a little bit ahead, but I like the confidence. You got you to know that Serena wrestled a hard-fought match last night, so you should take your uh, opportunities at a pin whenever you can get them. Look at this. Serena with a standing Spanish fly right out of the gates. I guarantee you Sarah didn't see that coming. Serena springboard moonsault. Oh, my God. She got her with a head and upper body, but... Most of her core landed on the mat. That looked like it hurt both women. Nice head scissor takedown. Now Serena, look at the way she runs those ropes and leads into a drop kick to the back of the neck. 
She hurt herself, though. Definitely that moonsault had her absorb a lot of impact on her body, and she is slow to get up after that move. And just, just think of all the stuff that Aiko Katsuko put her through last night. She is not 100% going into this match. Sarah with a hip toss back in the ring comes the women's champion, forcibly so. And now Shepard got just going to wrench that neck area. We've seen Sarah Shepard employ a knee bar before in the past. If she's going to work on the knee, she's probably going to try and employ some uh, submission holds down there. But right now, working on, the, working on the neck area, which is something that Aiko Katsuko softened up last night. That rear chin lock gets broken free of by Serena, who's got her now with a butterfly. Butterfly power bomb is countered with a Hurricane Rana. Very nicely done by Sarah Shepard, the challenger. Sarah, look at Oh, fantastic. Fant you may know that move as the eat defeat or something something else with a cute name, but either way, it's effective. And Sarah Shepard just, just barely avoids a victory there. I should say Serena just barely avoids defeat, but either way works. Sarah Shepard, Irish whip to the corner. Throws Serena out of the corner again. Ooh, very hard into the turnbuckles. It follows that up with a double bulldog, double-handed bulldog. One, two, so rope. Serena's foot was on the rope. The referee was not in position to see it. She had to kick out instead anyway. And you know uh, Serena did that to try and conserve all the energy she can. Forced to kick out anyway. Let's see how that affects her going even further into this matchup as Sarah Shepard is just taking complete control, slamming Serena face first into the mat. Brushes it off like it's nothing. Oh, knee right across the lower back. Oh, Sarah. Oh, we've seen this before. She's going to spike her knees right into the mat. Oh, my God. I guess you can call that a knee pile driver. I'm not sure what the scientific wrestling name for that is. Surprisingly went for a cover after that. Usually she uses that as a follow-through to get her uh, knee bar locked in. But, hey, like I said, you got to take your opportunities at a victory whenever you can get it. And Sarah Shepard did the smart thing right there and she's measuring the women's champion right now oh rolls through rolls through she's got the knee bar locked in Serena is very close to the rope but I don't think she can extend her leg out to, to hit it oh she is writhing in pain she did not really get her knees worked on last night but still her whole body is now going to be feeling in, in complete misery I think it looks like Sarah is shimmying her away from the ropes even further as she struggles it's brilliant ring control here by the challenger Serena is still hanging in it, though. The referee is right on top of her, ready to call for the bell if she submits. Oh, my God. This is... Even if she survives this, the damage has to be done. Oh, what a kick to the bridge of the nose. That's a broken nose if I've ever seen one there. Serena gets out of it, but her knee has got to be in shambles. And that what, that cannot bode well for any of her high-flying antics. As she hits a tilt -a world to a small package, tries to wrap the legs up, but Sarah Shepard breaks out of it. Serena's knee. If, 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 if it's as bad as I think it may be after, after being in the knee bar for that long, I don't know if we're going to see a siren song here tonight. Good luck climbing the ropes with that kind of that kind of injury. Sarah's keeping the pressure on her. Look at these shots, these chops, these forearms. Serena fights back with a jawbreaker. However she can, she will fight back. Serena got her with a beautiful around the back head scissor into an arm bar. She's got the arm bar locked in out of nowhere. She's going to have to really adapt and use a ground-based strategy at this point, and this is what she's doing. Sarah Shepard, though, had the wherewithal to crawl to the ropes and break that hold. Oh, Serena goes for a kick. Maybe the wrong call as she gets her knee chopped out from underneath her. I don't believe that was the knee that was in the knee bar, but still. Oh my God, oh no, the risk did not pay off. She didn't have to use her lower body for that, but Sarah Shepard just, just barely, I don't even know if she intended on getting out of the way, but she did, but Serena follows through with a drop kick. You gotta chalk that one up to inexperience. There's no reason Sarah should not have capitalized on her right away. And she gets thrown into the ring steps, ribs first. Women's champion just trying to get her back in the ring at this point. You got to admire the uh, the heart and desire of the champ. She doesn't want to win this one by count out, even though she could keep her championship. Oh, doesn't go for a springboard. Normally we would probably see Serena try some kind of springboard move or go off the top rope, but she is not doing that right now. Goes for a kick, but again gets chopped out from, with an elbow. Oh my God! You see that shot to the back of the head? There's a forearm shiver maybe knocking out the champion, but 
Referee says that was a rope break. Look at Sarah, she is incensed by that call. Smacking the referee around. Oh no, Sarah is, is right in front of Serena, just playing to the crowd, but the women's champion is trying to get some kind of second win as she hits a super kick. She's got the, the challenger grounded. Uh-oh, uh-oh, look at that. Again, she's got the arm bar locked in. Sarah Shepard crawled to the ropes before. The referee this time is right in position to make the call. Sarah is trying, trying to get to the ropes. But she has to tap out. Serena hangs on and, and she had to change her strategy up a lot for that one with the, uh, with the knee bar and the damage it did to her. And this too, look at this, spiking the legs into the mat. That was a fantastic showing for both women. Sarah Shepard will be back, no doubt about it. This is only her first opportunity at Women's Championship Glory. Serena, though, proves to be the champion on this day and shows exactly why she's the champion. She has earned herself a little bit of a reprieve. I think we'll give Serena a little bit of time off like I intended on giving Jason Adams time off here tonight. But as far as I understand, he's going to be making his way out to the ring very, very shortly, and I do not agree with this. Serena, celebrate your win. You earned it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we will be right back. I'm just hoping he's not. I'm just hoping he thought better of it at this point. He didn't. He didn't think better of it. I admire the man for everything that he stands for, and I admire his tenacity, his will to win, his will to compete, but this is not smart. This is absolutely not smart. I'm not sure what his end game is here. As far as I was told in my headset before, he is infuriated with the LBA and he wants Joel to come out to the ring and face him. I don't know if that means he wants the championship match to be tonight. But if I know Joel, he's not coming out. And then we saw what the LBA, I did say the LBA, the world's axis. I could be wrong, maybe I was seeing things. Maybe I was seeing things. Maybe they're not part of the LBA. That shirt looked mighty familiar. That logo looked mighty familiar. I just don't know if Jason realizes what he's getting himself into. He's dabbled against Joel in the past, but he's never been a target by the LBA. He is now a target. And we've seen what happened to everybody the LBA has targeted. We've seen what happened to Ivan. We've seen what happened to Jackson, to Bryce. And Rich Reed's not here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Jason is all by himself. Well, this challenge has been answered. It's not by the man he wanted. I wasn't seeing things. This is a damn travesty. Oh my God. The world's most dominant tag team in professional wrestling is, is just... They've aligned with the world's most scummiest group of wrestlers. This is this is unbelievable. How the hell did they talk these guys into joining their cause? What the hell is going on here? This LBA started out with, with Joel and Lewis, and then it grew. Then you got Eric Campbell and Salvaje in there, and now you got Corporal Punishment, Nick Farrell, and these guys joining. What the hell is going on in this company? Jason Adams is ready for a fight. He is ready to fight two-on-one -on against the tag team champions. He can't even beat them with his own partner. And he's the world champion. I, I, so I guess this is a tornado handicap match. I guess there's no tags. This is unbelievable. Jason is trying to fight back. Give him credit, but this is, this is, he's not winning this match. Oh my god, he's still fighting, but every time he does something, they're right there to keep the pressure on. He's trying to counter all their moves. Good god. You, you know that Joel is somewhere, I don't know if he's backstage, I haven't seen him, or if he's at home. 
watching this on the television. You know he set a smile on his face. Takeshi is knocked out of the ring, but Blitzkrieg's right there to keep the pressure on to Jason. Jason Adams just went through a 25-minute war against Rich Reed less than 24 hours ago. The man was a bloody mess. I didn't even recognize his face by the end of it. And he's all stitched up now. And he might not be, he might not be looking so clean after this match. Oh, Blitzkrieg takes a big chance, but Jason avoids it. Now Jason Adams, this is his opportunity. He can fight back. If he can get Blitzkrieg in the ring, Takeshi is perched on the top rope, which is very, very dangerous. I don't like that. Blitzkrieg counters out of it with that, that arm drag, and then it's over. It's over. A diving headbutt to the outside by Takeshi Kato. The man is an absolute savage. And Takeshi is going up top again. Blitzkrieg throws Jason to the wolves. Good God, an elbow drop to the spine. Just put him out of his misery. Blitzkrieg follows with an elbow of his own. Look at this. He just throws him to Takeshi. Lifts him up in the air effortlessly. God, ladies and gentlemen, the main event was, was the women's championship match. This is nothing more than a glorified shit show. I'm sorry. Oh, Jason's still fighting back. This man does not know how to, to, to live to fight another day. And that is an admirable quality in some ways, but it's all... Oh! He avoided that and, and made sure Blitzkrieg hit his own partner. But he couldn't follow through with that, that springboard moonsault. Or springboard crossbody. Blitzkrieg avoided that. And every time Jason Adams looks to like he's going to get something going, it's immediately snuffed out. Jesus, a running roundhouse kick. This is, he's playing exactly into the hands of Hernandez. And there's no way he doesn't know it. There's no way he can't realize it at this point. That man knows how to get under your skin in the most unbelievable ways and make you do stupid things. And that's what Jason Adams did tonight. He did a stupid thing. Oh, no. A German suplex onto Jason. He delivered quite a few of those last night. Oh, oh, that spinning back fist was countered, but Blitzkrieg right there. Jesus. That, if that back fist connected, it would have been over. But... I don't think we have to worry about it being over anymore. That running knee to the throat by Blitzkrieg. I guess this was an officially recognized match, but not to me. This was this was horrible. The LBA continues to grow and it continues to scare me every single time I see it. It's getting out of hand at this point. It's getting very, very bad. Do we have to see this twice, production truck? Do we really have to see that twice? Do we even have to see it once? Ladies and gentlemen, the tag team champions of the world, already the most dominating force in wrestling, have just signed their souls to the devil. Now we're all in hell. 